Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Engineer, hope everyone is okay. Welcome to our classes for the PCDB exam preparation courses for the mechanical engineer. This class is well oriented and designed for giving you a clear understanding about the QCDB exam and how easily you can pass through the exam, what is the tips, what is the tricks for this exam, allowing you to easily pass it, inshallah, from the first attempt. Let me introduce myself to you. I'm Mohammed Ilzini. Uh, I will be your instructor for these classes. I have over 30 years experience within the MEP services from the design, construction, project management, supervision, testing, commissioning, and uh, handing over the building for the QCDB and the passing through the test of the QCDB as well. And I hope I will give you a clear understanding, uh, sharing my knowledge for you, which I hope it will be good for you to understand and easily pass for the exam. Let us go through the, the exam contents and how the classes is structured. Within the exam, within our classes, we will talk about the hazard classification area, what is the natural or the hazard uh, materials and the classification, talking about the standards of NFPA 2020, and what will be the QCDB regulation, taking overall uh, understanding about the regulation of the QCDB. We will understand the QCDB regulation, it is subsidiary or uh, almost uh, typical from the NFPA. They are typically uh, applying the NFPA. In general, 99% from the NFPA they are applying. And the some areas where they have uh, additional requirements for the QCDB to show the application and the country uh, requirements and the natural of the project here in Qatar. We'll talk also about the QCDB measure areas for the related for the life safety. And the life safety, it is not only uh, applicable for the mechanical, it is applicable for all certified QCDB engineers for electrical, mechanical, and Arctic. So why you are talking about it here in the uh, mechanical classes? As you will be the certified engineer, QCDB certified engineer, you will be eligible for application, uh, submitting for the QCDB, uh, checking and certifying the drawing of the QCDB, uh, jointing the inspector from the civil defense when they are coming to the site for inspection. You should be fully aware about the life safety and you will be responsible for the, maybe for the maintenance of the building and the operational, which would be attacking for the life, for the life of the people and the occupants should be aware about it. Fire alarm system, which will have a direct interface and interaction with all mechanical system. We'll talk about it as in case of the fire, the fire alarm control panel will be the governor and the leader and the taking the lead and action for everything in the building. We'll talk in detail about the firefighting, the sprinkler system. We'll talk about it. Uh, Stand by, stand by it. We'll talk about the water tank. We'll talk about the fire pump. Talking about the ACMV, air condition mechanical ventilation, which uh, would be applicable for the smoke management system and the smoke extraction, extraction system from the building to evacuate the building and extract all the smoke outside. What is the type of the uh, ventilation mechanically? ventilation and the natural ventilation. What is the requirement for the QCDB as well? And all of this one, it is under the QCDB guidelines, well indicated and also will take the NFPA related section accordingly. Emergency lighting, as it is a part of the uh, life safety system. To apply all of this system, we should understand what is the classification of the buildings under construction and what is the fire risk related. The occupancy classification for the nature of the building and what is the rating for this one. Most important for the civil defense, we'll talk about the escape route, the exit way, the egress calculation, 
calculations here, it's mainly related to the arc, the not for the mechanical, but we have to understand what is the way they are calculating, what is the factor to be considered uh, during the calculation. What is the number of the uh, exit routings and exit doors? Uh, what is the floors, maximum uh, habitable floors and the height requirement? We'll talk about the safe escape routes and the lobbies, left lobbies, smoke lobbies, firefighting lobbies, and what is the QCDD regulation for each type of occupancy, either it is a residential or hotel or mixed use or offices or school, etc. What is the regulation for the QCDD for each type? Mainly for the exam of the QCD, we are talking about the residential building. If they are not specifying a natural and the, of the building and the occupancy of the building, consider it as a residential building. This is a natural and how they are uh, cautioning. So basically talking about residential building. Not only this one, so this is a part of the QCBD exam, how to pass the exam. But not only this one is the contents for our class. As, will, as I said, you will be the certified QCDD engineer. You will have the authority to sign the drawing. Either you are a consultant or a contractor. Having the authority to sign the, the drawing for the submission design or as design drawing for the submission of DC2 or the as built submission for the inspection of the QCD upon the completion of the building. So, what is the level of details required to be submitted? What is the drawings and what is the documents? It is not part of the civil defense exam, but it will be very helpful for you, for your experience in life and uh, how to run the project. We will give you a clear understanding about all of these submissions, the process of the submission procedure, what is the level of details will be required. And what will be the documents also required for the submission as a calculation, the riser diagram, certificate, a test report, what will be the requirements and the flow a charge for the submission process, either it is in the DC1 or DC2 or the as built submission, what is the process for the submission and the up and after the operational of the building, if you would like to make a modification required for the operational and having a modification related to the life safety system, like the firefighting or a fire alarm, etc., you are not allowed to apply any kind of modification unless you have the QCDD uh, permission and uh, certificates. So, how to apply it? What is the process? It's also part of our study. So, here we'll give you the full understanding about the QCDD overall how to pass the exam, how to submit the drawing how to secure the applications for the DC2, the DC1, how to secure the and making the submission for the as built as well, what is the documents, what is the drawing, etc. Not only this one, we'll give you a tips during the inspection of the civil defenses themselves, if they are coming to the uh, site inspection, what will be the points they are interested to inspect it and check and how you will be answering what you have to put. be prepared for the inspection as well. So who will be the engineer eligible for passing the exam? First should be certified engineer UPDA and should be a mechanical engineer who would work in, uh, for the design, supervision, or installation, testing, and the commissioning, maintenance for all fire protection system and the life safety system should be certified by the civil defense. It is not mandatory to all the engineers to be certified for the company. It is enough to have one engineer certified within the company, which will be uh, enough to running the business. It is not mandatory to have all the engineers certified. Eligibility should be certified UPDA, MUMUP. And this certification, it has to go through your company, which means your company should have a activity within the registration card of the company 
for the life safety systems, like uh, for installation for the firefighting, for the fire alarm, for for mechanical, for firefighting and uh, smoke management, etc., should be a, an activity available within the company. And the process will be through the PRO of the company. He has to apply it online with the company registration card, license card, and your uh, UPDA valid license. And once applied, you will receive a, a message to go for the exam within five to 10 days, one week or maximum two weeks time, you will receive uh, the, the notification about the exam. The materials that to be uh, checked, the basis for us, it would be the QCDD fire and the life safety guidelines. This one, it was issued in 2015 revisions and it is segregated and classified for the different type of occupancy for the apartment buildings, hotel, residential, uh, dormitory, business, mercantile, educational, health care, storage, industrial, etc. And this is the shape how the guidelines, the QCDD guidelines, it is uh, a structure for the type of the building, either it is low rise building or medium rise and high rise. And for the life safety systems, and what will be the minimum required for, e for each one. In the next slides, inshallah, we'll start to talk about the QCDD guidelines and we'll go through it in detail. Basically, the most important documents for the QCDD is the guidelines plus the annex, which we'll talk about it as well. And this annex, it is giving you a brief uh, about the applications of what we have to, to fulfill, plus the general comments and the minimum requirements for each system. We will talk about it in detail. And this one, it is uh, complying with the NFPA. In many areas, you will find that UCDD guidelines, it's talking only comply with the NFPA requirements and we will see and study for next classes. So what will be the chapters of the NFPA we are going to study? We will talk about the fire extinguishers, which is NFPA 10, NFPA 13 for the sprinkler system, NFPA 14 for standby and hose system, NFPA 20 for the fire pump protection, 24 for the fire service made and their appurtenance, 25 testing and maintenance for water-based protection system, and the 29 for the smoke control system, 101 for the life safety codes, and the 2001 for the clean Asian uh, fire extinguisher testings. This is uh, the chapters which will be uh, required to study to pass the exam. In addition, definitely for the QCDD guidelines. How the exam, it is structured. <clears throat> the exam, it is computer-based exam. It's an open book. Uh, you will go for the civil defense uh, quarter and you will get the, the computer to start the exam. It's an open book. They will provide everything you needed within the NFPA section, but the QCDD guidelines will not be available. So the NFPA standards will be available on your PC, but unfortunately it is not searchable, which means you will have the NFPA chapters on the section, but you cannot search. If you would like to, to get the answer for the, for the question, searching for uh, sprinkler coverage, you cannot search for this one. So our assistance for you to explain the NFPA sections clearly for you, to, uh, from the point of what is required for the QCDD. Definitely for the NFPA sections, we will not go through the NFPA sections completely. It is not possible at all. Each chapter of the NFPA, we talk about it uh, like 13 or 101 or 20 or 25, etc. It is requiring at least 30 to 40 educational hours to explain it for you uh, in very details. Uh, this is not our interest. This is not how the, this, uh, the course for the QCDD <clears throat> is a structure. But we will 
we will talk about the sections of the NFPA completely, talking about the interest from the CCDD, what they are looking for uh, from each section and what is the, the questioning is coming uh, for the application itself. Noting that the QCB, they are always talking, uh, questioning for the uh, general and the common questions for coming for the applications. They will not go for very specific and rare examples of the application for the sprinklers, for example. It is not the way how the exam it is perfect. Uh, exam, it is classified for to test all the engineers for the design, for the supervision, for the maintenance operational, for the construction engineers. So they are testing your knowledge about the NFPA. That's why the, the exam it is open book. They are not testing your memory. The exam it is coming in 25 questions over one and a half hour. So it's almost um, three minutes, more or less for each question. To pass the exam, you have to, to, to pass 70% minimum questions to be get it okay so this is a way how the exam it is structured and this is a way how the exam uh, it will question for you we will start from the next classes uh, talking about the qcdd and going for our journey for the mfpa sections required and inshallah will be easy for you to pass for the exam this is a contact for the skill explorer if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us over the uh, direct line for the mobile number as it is shown or through the website or the email and we will be more than happy to answer your questions and inshallah wishing you all the best and the passing the exam from the first try. Thank you and we'll see you in the first chapter for the QCBD guidelines. Bye-bye.